Hi, welcome to the part one of current affairs of week three. We'll start with G20 presidency. As you know, India has holds the current G20 presidency. So the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will hand over the baton of G20 presidency to Brazilian President Lula on September 10th. So since we held the presidency right now, it will be handed over to Brazil next. This is very very important. Now, since we know that whom we are going to pass it on to, it's important that we also know whom we who we got it from. India assumed the presidency of G20 on which date? On 1st December 2022 and we got it from Indonesia. This is important. It's important to know where we got it from and who we passed it on to. Now, now this is very important. At the G20, the member holding the rotatory presidency every year, that is right now, that is India. India holds the presidency. The member holding the rotatory presidency every year works together with its predecessor. Predecessor matla, the one who was, who was the president before us. That would, that would be Indonesia. And successor, successor would be Brazil. Together known as Troika. So, the country that holds the presidency now, the one before them and the one after them. These together will be known as the Troika and they will work together. Why? They will work together to ensure continuity of the agenda. India is currently part of the G20 Troika comprising Indonesia, India and Brazil. Of course, Indonesia came, was the G20 president before us, then India in the middle and then after us would be Brazil. Now, India's G20 presidency marked the first time that the Troika consists of three developing and emerging economies. Now, this is a very, very important point. See, even when uh, Indonesia held the presidency, you can imagine that uh, the, it was some other country who was the predecessor, which was not a uh, developing country. Okay. But this is the first instance where you have all the three countries in the Troika belonging to the developing world who are all emerging economies this is very very important and you need to remember the order of the troika too now let's move on to the next one you might have seen this in the news the israel eritrean migrant issue there was a huge clash on september 7 2023 at tel aviv tel aviv is in uh, israel the clash was between the Israeli police on one side and the supporters and opponents of the government of Isaias, Isaias Afwerke. See, when, if, since these people are protesting and there was a huge clash, we might assume that, okay, uh, has this something to do with Israel? No, it is the people who fought were all Eritrean migrants and the supporters and opponents of the government of this this person this person is the head of which country eritrea and he has ruled eritrea since its independence in 1991 so you can imagine it's been a such a long long rule more than 30 years and his supporters and opponents fought at tel aviv in israel what happened during the there was an event organized by the Eritrean embassy and er, the Eritrean embassy organized an event to mark the revolution day on September 1st war, for what to commemorate the start of Eritrea's war of independence against Ethiopia in 1961 it, Eritrea's war of independence against Ethiopia went on from 1961 to 1991 when they finally separated so you could say that they were kind of trying to commemorate this day but then what happened this huge clash happened and many many people got injured so right now since this has happened on israeli soil and they already have a lot of migrants from eritrea the israeli prime minister is very very upset about it the israeli prime minister benjamin netanyahu has threatened to deport deport man means to send them all back to Eritrea deport all Eritrean migrants who were involved in the violent clash in Tel Aviv. Now let's have a closer look at where these places are.
see the green place that you see over here the highlighted one this is your israel you can see that this is in asia only hmm? this is where israel is the capital of israel is jerusalem though tel aviv is very very popular because that is because it is the economic and technological center of the country and this is where the clash happened now let us have a look at eritrea so even in this you can see over here this con this country over here this country over here that uh, no 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 see wait just a minute okay yes see this country over here i'm so sorry that i messed it up this is your eritrea and that is an african continent see let's have a closer look here the part marked in green that is eritrea and the one in orange is ethiopia so you can understand that when eritrea separated from ethiopia they kind of made ethiopia a landlocked country and this eritrean war of independence went on from 1961 to 1991 now since this has been in the news recently it is important that we know a very few basic things about it the capital of eritrea is asmara and the capital of ethiopia is addis ababa addis ababa is quite popular now let's have a closer look at eritrea why would all these people migrate from their country you know a country which got its independence after such a long struggle and why would they just migrate all the way to israel in eritrea we have a one party system and they do not hold elections they lack a parliament independent courts and civil organizations so despite the hard fought and won freedom they don't have any elections they lack a parliament independent courts and civil organizations they they have severely restricted freedom of expression and press and they have strict compulsory military service and a system of forced labor in addition to this what makes things worse is that there are there is no term limit for the president in the constitution of eritrea that is why this person has managed to be the this guy ICS Afwerki he has managed to rule the country since its independence in 1991 so no term limits for the president now let's move on to the next one organized crime and corruption reporting project they were in the news recently let's uh, let's look at the basics first and then we'll move on to its contemporary relevance The OCCRP is a global network of investigative journalists and it was founded in 2006 by veteran journalists Drew Sullivan and Paul Rado. You need to know that this is a group of investigative journalists founded in 2006 and you need to be aware of the founders too. Now, why was this why is this important right now? They they investigated the Adani group recently. because of which sri lanka who had signed an agreement with the adani green energy limited for a 400 million dollar project for a 500 megawatt renewable energy development power project in manar and punarin you need to be aware of these two places at these two places the adani green energy limited had signed an agreement for to undertake a project at this rate 400 million US dollars to install 500 megawatt renewable energy development but right now what due to the report by this uh, project what are they thinking now the sri lankan government is proposing to convert it to a government to government deal see so far it was a government to business deal g2b government to business because they were going to directly a uh, do transaction with adani group however now since the report has come out since uh, they have investigated the organized crime and corruption reporting project have investigated the adani group now what they want to do is they want to convert it to a government to government deal now how is it different from a government to business deal or business 
yeah you you got me the government to business relations they what do they focus on they focus on job creation technological advancements and economic growth so basically it's uh, just looking for opportunities and advancement that's it now coming to g to g why why would someone go for government to government deal rather than government to business relations in government to government relations they provide the necessary policy framework first you have the policy framework then you they'll provide you with the legal structures and three you will have diplomatic support so the sri lankan government is trying to uh, ensure that they have minimal risk see and uh, as you can see the organized crime crime and corruption reporting project as you can see from the name itself their focus is on anything with related to crime organized crime and corruption now let's move on to the next one rose atom rose atom is russia's state energy company the state energy company now it is very relevant right now why because they are building bangladesh's first nuclear power plant in rupur this is very important for us it's our next door neighbor and in bangladesh's first nuclear power plant in rupur it is the, the first of the two units two units are being built and the first of the two units is expected to go into operation in 2024 that is quite early just next year and this agreement is worth a minimum of 12.65 billion dollars us dollars you can imagine that's a huge huge amount however russia is funding nearly 90% of it almost more than around 11.38 billion dollars will be given as loan by russia right now the rest will be undertaken by them the responsibility for the rest would be taken up by the bangladeshi government however this is very important for them why because it is expected to generate around 15% of the country's electricity when completed so they are willing to spend so much amount in, in into it now an interesting thing that we have to note about it is that in the year 2008 china offered funding for this project however if china was funding a nuclear power plant in our backyard this would not have made indians feel safe but then what happened is bangladesh decided on proceeding with russia in 2009 so this was a much acceptable or you say you could say more favorable uh, arrangement for indians now going to the next one banwatu is a island country which had its prime minister replaced recently the smiling photo that you see right now is not of the outgoing prime minister that is the one who has been appointed right now he is the acting prime minister right now the outgoing prime minister ismail kalsakau hmm? why was he important because he was known for his pro western approach pro western matlab us and its allies ko aur favor karta tha and kalsakau has expressed skepticism or doubt regarding first thing increased chinese involvement in banatu so he was not comfortable with the english chinese involvement and second he alleged that there is a lack of transparency in loans from china so he was very vocal about it however he did not have much support and he was replaced by the former prime a person who has served as a former prime minister that is sato kilman that is this guy now where is banatu over here you can see the island of australia and over here is where you have banatu you have to know that the capital is port vila and despite being a small very small island nation it is a parliamentary democracy with a written constitution this is good to know as 
see this is good na especially uh, in comparison to countries such as eritrea that we eritrea and ethiopia that we uh, discussed today now you can have a look over here for those of you who are very ardent cricket followers you would know that this is new zealand and australia you know this is tasmania okay now there is one more thing that we need to be aware about that is see these are the different uh, groupings into which these islands are put into okay you can see that in under australasia only tasmania comes new zealand is another unit altogether however what is important for us right now is that vanuatu is present as part of melanesia you need to remember this vanuatu is part of melanesia okay now let's move on to the next one b20 summit was held in delhi b20 or the business 20 is the official official g20 dialogue forum with the globus business community and the participants would be companies as well as business organizations this was established in 2010 this is important and what does the b20 aim to do they aim to deliver concrete actionable policy recommendations what do you mean by actionable policy recommendations it's not just enough for a government to come up with some uh, policy recommendations you should see as to whether it is feasible or not whether it is productive whether it is going to contribute something that the industry actually needs and whether this something that the industry can actually put to work and bring some concrete uh, results with so that is what they aim to deliver they aim, aim to deliver concrete actionable policy recommendations to spur economic growth and development so you will come up with policy recommendations which are more feasible or which are more required this is quite easy to understand but important to remember too now this is another thing that you need to remember the theme of the current b20 summit was race responsible accelerated innovative sustainable and equitable businesses you need to remember this acronym and the rest will follow that's it for today i'll come out with part 2 very soon